today on Fixing the Money Thing. Everyone must be tested. God's not going to hand you responsibility, His divine assignments, without you being tested first, where His name's not attached to it. You see, God is not into the business of letting His name be defrauded because of your weakness. Now, He loves you, but He is after integrity. It's summertime, a season to relax a bit. Enjoy time in favorite places, with favorite food and favorite people. It's also a great time to enjoy some kingdom mentorship. Gary and Trenda's favorites, today on Fixing the Money Thing. Welcome, I'm Gary Cassie. And I'm Drenda, so glad to have you today. We want to just take a minute and share with you why we're so excited about the kingdom and what we've seen and just take some time to remember the goodness of God. I remember Drenda in the Philippines, we had a meeting set up and this man wanted to come to the meeting, but he couldn't. He was in the hospital for 40 days, paralyzed with a stroke. But he begged and begged and finally they let him out and he had to find transportation. So he begged a coconut truck let him ride in the back on the coconuts for 12 hours to get to the meeting. Now, I didn't know this had happened, but he came to the meeting again without me knowing he was paralyzed because they had carried him in and set him down before I walked in the room. But at the end of the meeting, we prayed for him, not knowing that he was paralyzed. They carried him to the front and he was instantly healed. Now, this meeting, before that happened, were, they were very like, okay, we've heard everything. We don't need to hear anything else, kind of not interested really in what I was well, about so, to say. Sometimes when you're overseas, yes. the attitude is, oh, you're from America, that works there, it doesn't work here, right. which isn't true. Exactly. <laughs> the but, Word of God works everywhere. <laughs> what happened next when he was instantly healed and got up and began running around and moving his limbs normally, they went nuts. They ran to the front, they were all ears, and we had us a great, great meeting in the Philippines. And that man went on to begin to preach the gospel in and prisons, help others yes. in prison, and many, many healings took place. Yes. Great memories. It is. It's exciting to think through the years of all the things yeah. God has done as, we teach, as we're teaching the kingdom. His word is what works. It That's moves right. and changes things. Yeah. And I know for me, uh, one of the great memories I have is doing a women's conference. And when I got there, the women looked really unhappy, very unhappy. As a matter of fact, it sort of inspired me to write better than you feel and to talk about the happy life because I thought, who wants your life? These women are like scowling and they're angry and they're mad. But as we begin to preach the word of God, share the word of God and challenge them, who wants the life that you have? Mm. What, what has God done in your life? And are you apprehending the word of God and letting it bring change so that people do want what you have? They want Christ. As we're talking about that, my daughter also ministered after that. They got to see the fruit, not only in my life, but in our daughter's life. Then and we did an altar call and 95% of the women in that room were at the altar and I began to see women get delivered free, set mm -hmm. free and all of a sudden their sadness, their sorrow, their anger, their bitterness turned to peace and joy and rejoicing and so it's always wonderful to see that look as people are yeah. getting the word of God and it begins to change their countenance from either hurt and broken or angry or their body from right. uh, sick, diseased to freedom. We love yeah. to see freedom. I call it the light bulbs come on. That's what I call it. When we watch the light come on in people's eyes, yes. they receive the kingdom and they then see the evidence of their lives. Countless, countless people and emails and stories come to us every day about the kingdom of God. We thought that you might enjoy hearing some of our favorite sessions that we've taught and review some of these great, yes. great things God's given us. And as we've traveled, we've carried these messages. We thought it'd be great to spend a moment with you today and review some of these great messages that we've taught. Yes, because faith does come by hearing, Gary. And the Bible says that we continue in His Word. That's right. We'll know the truth and will be completely free. We want you to continue. You know, it's one thing to get freedom, it's another to stay free. And that's by continuing in the teaching and in the word that you've heard. So let's so go let's to go. that now. Before God can entrust you with his treasure, the treasure is the revelation of your destiny, you have to be mature enough to handle it. And so God puts you into a system of training that today, in this series, we're going to call today the preparation test that you have to pass. First Timothy chapter 3, grab your Bibles, verse number 10. Deacons must what? First be tested. And if there's nothing against them, let them serve as deacons. This is God's system. Everyone 
must be tested. God's not going to hand you responsibility, his divine assignments, without you being tested first, where his name's not attached to it. You see, God is not into the business of letting his name be defrauded because of your weakness. Now, he loves you, but he is after integrity. The world likes integrity, don't they? All right. Now, it says in Titus chapter 1, verse number 6, it says this, an elder must be blameless. Verse 7, since an overseer is entrusted with God's work, he must be blameless. Why? Because your name always shows up before they see God's name. They see you and what you represent, your integrity, your faithfulness, before they ever hear about God. So the Bible says that since an elder or an overseer or a pastor is assigned or entrusted with God's stuff, they must be blameless. Pretty strong word. Does that mean you never make mistakes? No, you'll make mistakes. You just shouldn't be in the office of the overseer if you're in the middle of making a lot of mistakes. <laughs> Does that make sense? All right. Can God trust you with the big assignments? Can God trust you to go into enemy-held territory and stay steadfast? See, he has to test you first. Matthew chapter 25. Uh, well, I'll just make a note of the scripture. You can look it up at, at home. It's the parable of the talents. We've talked about it many times. But, you know, the story, the master gave three servants some money. One five talents, one two talents, and one one talent. What did the guy do that had the five? He became what? That's ten. The two became? And the one became? One. He didn't do anything with it. So what did the master do? He took the one from the guy that had one and did nothing with it. What did he do with it? All right, let's look at the last part of that uh, parable, Matthew chapter 25, and look at verse number 28. Take the talent from him and give it to the one who has how many? Uh, what, what about the four? I mean, if I, this is 2013. Don't they know this is politically incorrect? I mean, I, they have a, I have a right to that. I have four. I have a right to that. Right? So, I know we need some politicians. Read the Bible, huh? Learn how prosperity is supposed to work. You say, well, that's not fair. It's not supposed to be fair. Why did God give the one talent that was not used to the guy that had ten? Because he knew how to handle. He was held responsible. The Bible says he went to work immediately with what was given to him. He could handle more responsibility. He produced the results. He got the job done. God loves every one of us, but he has assignments that he's looking for people that will pass the test. Can God trust you with the big assignment? Are you one of God's favorites? When he begins to devise a strategy, does your name pop up on the top of the list? They have been faithful before. They'll be faithful. Let's let them take the assignment. Amen? All right, so 1 Samuel chapter 13. Let's take a look back there with old King Saul. Talk about him again for a second. It's so much cheaper to look at someone else's mistakes and learn from them. Amen? We'll look at King Saul here. Chapter 13. The story was that he had received direction from the prophet of the Lord for a certain assignment. And he was not supposed to uh, produce the offering himself or to, to uh, officiate the offering himself. But he did. Verse 11 of chapter 13, the prophet confronts him with his disobedience. He says, what have you done? He said to Samuel. Saul replied, when I saw the men were scattering and that you did not come at the set time and the Philistines were assembling at Michmash, I thought, now the Philistines will come down against me at Gilgal and I have not sought the Lord, Lord's favor, so I felt compelled to offer the burnt offering. You acted foolishly, Samuel said. You have not kept the command the Lord God gave you. If you had, everyone say, if he had. Yes. If you will. Catch this, important. 
he would have, God would have established your kingdom over Israel for all time. But now your kingdom will not endure. The Lord has sought out a man after his own heart and appointed him leader of his people because you have not kept the Lord's command. Why was Saul disqualified? Because why? He did not keep the Lord's command. He could not be trusted with a trust. If he would have been trustworthy, the Bible says he would have been established. Now, I have people ask me all the time, Pastor, you know, they have all kinds of financial problems. And I find out typically they're not trustworthy. They're not faithful. They've had 35 jobs in the last 12 months. They, they're always finding fault with someone. They're not trustworthy. If they will find themselves trustworthy, then they could enjoy the established lifestyle. God has to help them become established for them to ever inherit the treasure that God has destined for them to, to inherit. You, you follow me so far? So, it was, see, Saul, God loves Saul, but Saul himself disqualified himself from the assignment. In the reverse, David qualified himself. God says, I've, I'm, I found a man, I'm looking for a man who has, who is after my own heart. What is God's heart? Passionate about God's passion. His passion. Do you have God's heart? Just ask that question. If you have God's heart, your heart's going to beat for the things God, God beats for. His passion is your passion. Do you see the difference? See, the issue was Saul didn't really have God's heart. He just got done building a huge statue to himself. Saul was in love with himself. Jesus said, if you love me, you will what? Keep my commandments. If I was a scientist examining your life, is there enough evidence to convict you of having God's heart? If there's not, God cannot, will not reveal the secrets of your destiny yet because you are not mature enough to have them revealed to you. More of Gary and Drenda's favorites after this. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing. And thanks for watching.